So it was a pretty normal day. We were working on some technique the second hour when we started sparring. I was swept, so I was in a top position and moved quickly to being on the bottom position. And I could feel some pain along my left side of my neck and my trap area. So I tapped. I was really dizzy and I was starting to feel nauseous. What happened with Jen was she sat back, she started saying she was tired. I kind of started to sense something was a little bit off because that's just not her. She doesn't, she's never too tired to roll. And the guy on the side of the mat noticed that she had uh, thrown up all over the mat. And that's when we all stopped. We knew something was really wrong. And then I hear that they've called the paramedics and I'm like great they're gonna come in with all their stuff and their shoes and they're gonna get the mats dirty and just a little backstory to some of her like nonchalant piece of laying there almost passing out she used to pass out about once a year they called me having me come in and I'm like really do I need to be there but the paramedics are there I'm like all right I'll be there so I'm driving in thinking oh man big hoopla over uh, you know this silly thing I get to the hospital and you see her and we realize, okay, well, she's tossing and turning. And she was in a lot of pain and writhing, and it wasn't the, it wasn't the same. You know, this is a pretty rare injury, but it causes, uh, she had a stroke of the, what we call posterior circulation. So when people get neck injuries, they can injure their artery that runs through the spine. So any sudden movement of head, such as chiropractic manipulation, roller coaster rides, jujitsu headlock can tear the vessel. When you tear the vessel, it clots and sends the clot up the brain to this posterior fossa and the cerebellum gets, or the brainstem get a stroke. You have to catch patients before they get to a point of falling into a coma. If you don't do anything, the, you compress the brainstem to a point of coma and death. And our, we have four daughters, and so they're at uh, her mom's, and it was that next morning that uh, was pretty much woken up by Dr. Chuka, and he was just letting me know, like, we're going into surgery. And so I'm like, oh, well, when are we going in? Is there anything? And he's like, no, we're going in right now. You just have to lay it on the table and let him know. It's not an operation I want to do, necessarily, but it is, it is a life-saving operation. And we remove the bone all around the cerebellum, open the heart sheath, the dura, and then sew in a patch to give her room and allow her to swell. And at the same time, I place the catheter in her ventricles, the chambers that make spinal fluid, to allow the pressure not to build up. It doesn't change the stroke, but allows, allows Jen to survive and then get through the recovery. You know, I picked up her mom, and I brought her mom in with me to the hospital. And as we went in, uh, she was still coming out of surgery. And uh, we met in with uh, Charge nurse. Charge nurse, thank you. Yeah, so she really broke it down. Like, this is the, uh, this is what happened. This is the process. And uh, what to kind of expect. It was pretty nerve wracking. You know, you're like, oh man, I didn't want something like a serious injury. I mean, serious, but not like what we're talking about, like life changing, life altering. Uh, it was a pretty intense uh, morning for sure. I got a lot of grief for it, but I didn't have very long from when I signed the consent to surgery. <laughs> so I snapped a little selfie of myself in the ICU bed and just said, off to brain surgery, posted that on social media. Yeah, and then my phone that just didn't blows go up. Very well for him. She's going into brain surgery, what? You know, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, where'd you hear this? You know, and I don't even know much about it. You know, I'm still yeah. like trying to process. So that was how we announced it to the world. Yeah. In Jen's case, when she had her injury, she had such a reserve of strength, physical strength, that she was improving rapidly. I showed up there in um, a wheelchair getting around, and then uh, they quickly were like, no, you don't need a wheelchair. One of the therapists had me um, hold one end of ski poles, and she walked behind me holding the other end, and we walked all around rehab, and she would make me move my arms, so I would remember to move my arms and turn my head. So it was <laughs> just me trying to remember how to be normal again. Actually, I think one of the therapists told on me, I'm pretty sure, because I was telling them, okay, I'm doing really good. I'd plan on doing my first half marathon that weekend. And they're like, mm, like at first I think they thought there's no way she thinks that she's doing that. Jennifer's very determined. And when she explained to me that she wanted to do that road race, we discussed 
uh, a bit about how she might accomplish that. So I think Jennifer made some adjustments to her own goals of completing that race, maybe different parameters about how fast or how she was going to complete it. Dr. Wald, like he's not telling me I can't do something, but he's basically being like, maybe we should make smarter choices in like a way that was realistic for me to take at that point. We can look at recovery as moving your arm or your leg or walking, but recovery really occurs at, at so many levels, psychological, social, behavioral. There are aspects to your recovery that are not physical, and all of them are vital. I just did the 5K and I walked it. She was literally the last person. I was, like, like the they last were person. picking up cones as she passed There's... them. She did her 3K. 5K. 5K, sorry, 5K. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell people I have the worst of luck, but also the best of luck, because who would go through all of the things that I went through where I have part of my skull missing and I had to have this surgery and I had all too many strokes to count, but I'm also kind of just fine. My oldest, especially a 12 year old, she's like, okay, mom, cool. Yeah. Like, all right, well, I'm kind of really <laughs> lucky. It's sort of a big deal. Yeah. <laughs>